In this video, we are gonna be discussing mastering mental game fundamentals. There's a lot to poker beyond exactly what happens when you are playing your two whole cards. You wanna make sure you essentially do not lose your mind and you do not go on tilt. But what is tilt? Tilt is a poker term for the state of mental or emotional confusion or frustration in which a player adopts a suboptimal strategy, usually resulting in the player becoming overly aggressive. This is when you essentially lose your mind and start playing poorly. Sometimes, sometimes you may tilt and be a little bit tight. Some players may tilt and be a little bit tight. Maybe if you run a bluff and you get called, you may decide I'm not bluffing anytime in the near future, in which case you're now playing too tightly, right? But typically people get frustrated for all sorts of reasons and often it results in them playing too aggressively or playing too call happy where they just really do not like to fold. And all sorts of things can cause tilt. Pretty much anything out of your control can very easily cause tilt, right? Say for example, you're playing poker and the cocktail waiter spills a drink on your head. That may tilt you or it may not. Maybe the dealer misdeals a hand where you would have had pocket aces and now you're mad that you would have had aces and now you don't, right? Maybe your opponent plays a hand absurdly bad and it just happens to work out for them. Maybe you play a hand absurdly well and it doesn't work out for you, right? Understand that most things in life are out of your control. All you can really control at the poker table is the strategy you bring to the table that you've learned away from the table and how you implement it at the table. That is it. And understand, even if you do everything right, sometimes you're still going to lose. That is part of the game. Get used to it. Understand that you need to focus on the process, not the outcome of any individual hand, because there is a lot of variance in poker. I highly recommend you figure out what triggers you and why. And with a little bit of honest assessment, you're going to realize that whatever that thing is, is probably a little bit silly. So, for example, say you know... You don't like it when your opponents play poorly because whenever they play poorly and outdraw you, you feel as if you have had some egregious misjustice happened, done to you, whatever the right words are here. You feel like you've been wronged. Why are you feeling like you've been wronged when someone plays poorly? That's a good thing. You know that you make money when people make mistakes in poker, right? If we all played well, there would be no money to be made. The house would just rake away all the money. So you desperately need your opponents to make blunders. And sometimes when your opponents make blunders, they're going to win. And that's okay. So being mad when someone makes a bad play and they outdraw you or they just happen to like value bet bottom pair and you call with worse, which would maybe be a good call against some people, but not this player. That's ridiculous, right? You want people playing poorly. Imagine the cocktail waiter spills a drink on your head. They didn't do it on purpose. It happens, right? If they did do it on purpose, uh, you probably deserved it. So understand that stuff happens. It's okay. Sometimes a dealer's gonna misdeal a hand. It's okay, it happens. They didn't do it on purpose, right? Understand that most irrational thought processes that you and I and everybody else has are irrational and silly. Also realize you don't need to do silly things. Assuming you know how to play decently well, you just need to implement that strategy. Anytime you play worse, for any reason, it doesn't make sense. And typically when you do play worse, it kind of implies you don't actually know how to play well. Typically when people go on tilt, they don't think quite so well. And when you don't think quite so well and quite so clearly, you will default to whatever your base level knowledge is for that particular thing, in our case, poker, right? And this is why you see a lot of players who are working hard and studying the game play pretty well most of the time. But when things start to go a little bit poorly, they revert back to whatever their default style or strategy is because they really haven't studied how to play well enough. And you want to make sure that you know how to play very, very well so that even when things are going very poorly and maybe you are a little bit tilty, you still play pretty well. And this is why you see a lot of the best players in the world not really go on tilt when it comes to the way they actually play their cards. Some players may be visibly frustrated, but they don't actually play much worse at all. And that's to some extent where you wanna be. Ideally, you don't get frustrated about nonsense anyway, but assuming you are gonna be a little bit feeble-minded and worry about nonsense, uh, you definitely don't want it to impact your play. 
So, assuming you do tilt, assuming you have not gotten over the fact that most things are out of your control and that all your job is to do is to show up and play great poker, when you feel yourself going on tilt, quite often you will notice yourself doing things. I know, personally for me, Jonathan Little, who really doesn't tilt much at all, if I start putting my chips in the pot a little bit too aggressively, that's usually a sign to me, hey, wake up, sir, wake up, sir. Why are you on tilt? What's going on in your head? Why are you frustrated? And the answer is all, almost always, I'm frustrated because something silly happened and I'm acting irrationally and that's stupid. Don't be stupid, Jonathan Little. And to be fair, I'm a little bit harsh on myself, a little bit harsh on my students, you know, like, because I think you need to be. Whenever you're in the heat of battle, playing for lots of money, the last thing you need is yourself doing something stupid for a lot of money, especially if it's for a rational reason, which it basically always is. So when you feel yourself tilting, maybe your head gets a little hot. Maybe you put your chips in too aggressively. Maybe you start cursing at your opponent or the poker gods or the dealer, who knows who, in your head. Whatever it is, something probably happens to you before you actually start playing poorly. When that happens, realize it and do something about it. Maybe stand up and take a stretch. Maybe take a five minute break. Maybe walk around the poker room and go outside and get some air. Maybe if you're particularly tilty, maybe you need to quit your current session. I am all for putting in a lot of volume and actually playing hands at the poker table. But if you're going to be playing them poorly, that's not ideal. Understand, though, that the idea of taking a break or taking a rest or quitting my current session is definitely just a bandage. You make money when you are dealt in, and when you're not dealt in, you're not making money. But if you are dealt in and you're playing poorly, you're going to be losing money, which is obviously worse than not playing. But I, at the end of the day, look, tilt is irrational. It happens whenever you're annoyed about something that you should not be annoyed about. And if your goal is to make as much money from poker as possible, you need to understand that variance exists and a lot of things out of your control exist. And your entire job is to show up and play excellent poker throughout your entire session. And if you do that, you are probably going to win money in the long run. And if you don't do that, if you're consistently making plays that you know lose money, well, obviously it's not going to work out for you. And I want things to work out for all of you. To win at poker, all you have to do is find a game you can beat, play it a lot, and keep a prop or bankroll. Find a game you can beat implies you are better than your opponents, either because they're terrible or you have studied way more to the point that you're better than even the best players. You have to play it a lot. You actually have to sit at the poker table and put in volume. You have to play hands. And then you have to keep a proper bankroll. And what I want to talk about here is that you win or lose some amount of money each hand you are dealt in. Therefore, in order to make good money from poker, you want to be dealt in to a lot of hands, right? Also, your goal should be to make as much money as possible in each hand you are dealt in, right? That's it. You should not really be concerned with winning each session because in reality, the start and end of each session are artificial, non-existent markers. It does not matter, especially in cash games, if you win X amount of money on each individual day. Yet, whenever people are getting close to ending their session, very often players either play way too tightly to try to lock up a win to ensure they get to put a, a profitable mark on their records, or if they're down, they gamble like crazy to try to get up or even. But you do not need to worry at all, at all, about trying to get up or even. I think one of my greatest strengths as a poker player is I literally don't care if I win or lose. All I care about is showing up and playing great poker. And if you play poker suboptimally for some amount of time in your session, that is either time that you're essentially gonna break even with a lot of variance, which is not good, or perhaps even lose. You have to play great poker all the time. Also, you must put in volume. When you do not play, you do not extract equity, assuming you are a profitable player. This is very clear whenever you look at an online cash game player's results, because you'll see very clearly how many big blinds per 100 hands you make. And let's say you do make, I don't know, five big blinds per 100 hands. That is 0.05 big blinds per hand. If a big blind is $1, that means you make five cents per hand you play on average. That's it. Grind it out. You know you make five cents a hand. 
And if you put in a lot of time at the table, maybe online, you play multiple tables, assuming your win rate does not go down because you're distracted by playing too many tables, you can make a very good living off of five cents a hand. A lot of the best players make a dollar per hand or five dollars per hand even. In live poker, it is very possible to make something like four or five dollars per hand at medium stakes live games because your opponents play so poorly. But in order to get this money, you have to actually be dealt in. You should not be taking long breaks. You should not be playing short sessions because if you do that, you are spending your time not extracting value. Realize that in the short run, variance is gigantic in poker. You are definitively going to go on large downswings. I see small stakes players get very frustrated when they go on a five buy-in downswing in tournaments or cash games, but that's normal. Get used to that. Now look, if you're playing good, strong, aggressive poker, you're probably going to swing three or 400 big blinds in every cash game session you play, and you're probably going to go on stretches where you don't cash in tournaments 15 times in a row. Because to be fair, you win a lot of money in tournaments by winning the tournaments, not by getting min caches. Getting min caches should not be your goal. Understand that this variance is actually a nice feature of poker. It is not a bug. It is not something you should be sad or disgruntled about. A lot of people, especially those who don't like losing, <laughs> they hate the idea that they're going to lose, especially when they think in their head that they are entitled to win because their opponents are better than them. I'm sorry, the other way around. They think they're entitled to win because they're better than their opponents. But understand, if you're playing cash games, for example, you may only play two or three, three big pots a day in a live cash game. And if you get it all in with, let's say, 55% equity on average, well, I don't know the exact math, but you're probably going to end up losing a decent chunk of the time. Way more than like 40%, right? Because you're kind of flipping coins with a little bit of an edge. And you're not actually putting in that much volume because you only get to flip those coins three times. Now, certainly you win or lose some amount of money in the small pots and that's going to matter, but you're not going to win more than like a third of, or two thirds of your sessions when you play cash games. Actually, when I used to play a lot of cash games and I would be putting in long, long sessions, I would win or lose roughly half of the time. Now, my wins were usually twice as big as my losses, but whenever I showed up to the casino, I was pretty sure I was going to win or lose about 50% of the time. And again, this goes back to the idea of I didn't really care about if I was up or down each day. All I care about being is up or down over like three years, right? And at the end of the day, you have to understand that volume cures variance. As long as you realize I'm going to go and I'm going to grind and I'm going to put in a lot of time at the table, I'm going to extract my edge very definitively. Now, in tournaments, there is a lot more variance than in cash games. I realize this. Hopefully you realize this. And it may take a really, really long number of tournaments or a large number of tournaments or a lot of time to extract your value in tournaments. But in cash games, you'll usually get it over the course of 100,000 hands or so, but 100,000 hands is actually a pretty good amount of hands. But if you play with an edge, your bankroll will go up, you will have some variance, but over time it becomes negligible. And that's important to realize. If the best players won every time, we would be playing a game like chess. And it turns out bad players don't really like playing chess for a lot of money. Whereas bad players don't mind playing poker for hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Variance is a feature of poker, not a bug. When you are actually playing poker at the table, it is vitally important that you stay present and that you are paying attention to what is actually happening at the table because you win as much as possible in poker by exploiting, taking advantage of the mistakes your opponents make. And if you're not present, if you're not paying attention, you will not see their mistakes. For example, if you are consistently scrolling Twitter or watching a sporting event or texting with a friend or talking to the player next to you, you're probably not going to pay as close of attention to the action as you could be. And now there it certainly is some line where your distraction level becomes detrimental. Right? Like if you're sitting there on Twitter doing like this and you're, and you're literally doing this when you're playing poker, when you're not involved in a hand, you're not going to see what's going on, right? If you have a quick chat with the player next to you, as long as you're kind of glancing at the action, you'll probably be okay. If you are playing $1, $2, no limit at the casino and you bet $200, or you have $200 at the table, but you bet $1,000 on the sporting event that they're showing on the TV way over there and you're doing this the whole time, you're not going to be paying attention, right? 
So you want to make sure that you figure out a way to pay attention to what is happening at the table. I'm not going to say you need to be staring intently at every single player's bet and action, but you want to be looking for abnormal things that your opponents do, right? You want to figure out the things that they do incorrectly that you can actively take advantage of. And then once you know the things your opponents are doing wrong that you can actively take advantage of, take notes on the adjustments you should be making. What a lot of players do wrong is they see someone make a play that's definitively bad, and they label in their head that that player who made that bad play is bad. But that doesn't really tell you what you need to be doing against that player, right? Maybe this player ran an, ran an absurd bluff. So against this player, maybe you should be calling down far wider, or at least calling down far wider in specific scenarios, because maybe they ran a bluff when the board was really good for their range, or maybe they ran the bluff when the board was really bad for their range, right? Whatever. You can't extrapolate too far off of one individual hand. Maybe your bad opponent actually folded out face up with something like the third nuts on the river. Maybe they're bad, but nitty. So you want to make sure you're not just labeling your opponents bad. You want to label your opponents as this player folded out to three streaks of aggression when the board ran out kind of bad for the third nuts. Stuff like that, right? You want to make it really, really clear in your mind, maybe by writing it in your phone, maybe by physically writing it on a notepad, whatever, what you should be doing against your opponent who makes a bad play. When you are playing, I realize you will inevitably get distracted. It happens to all of us. Do not be too harsh on yourself. You, but you need to find ways to consistently and routinely recenter yourself when you are playing. So what I personally do is that I'm, I'm pretty good at paying attention for like 10 minutes at a time. After that, my mind starts to wonder. So what I personally do is when I'm under the gun, first act, and I fold, which you'll usually do, I get up and I walk around the table, which results in me getting up and walking around the live poker table every 20, 25 minutes or so. I'll walk around the live poker table and I will look at everyone's chip stack and figure out how many chips each player has roughly. And I'll also sometimes, you know, take my eyes and look out the window if I can, if there is a window or look across the room and try to get my eyes a little break from like just looking right here in front of, in front of me, right? I think that's usually pretty nice to do. Maybe get a little stretch in, but getting up, walking around, that will help your body out a bit and also... Give yourself a little break from playing poker. I realize that in poker tournaments, you get a break every two hours, which is, you know, some, but not much. And in cash games, you just don't get a break. You take your own breaks. And some players literally never take breaks, but you do need to take breaks. You need to rest your mind and take your mind off of poker for a little bit, okay? Other players do things like um, rearranging their chip stack every hand. I don't really like that method because I like my, to know where my chips are. Some players... Um, I don't know, they like flick their wrist or whatever. They do They do all sorts of stuff to like make themselves wake up, whatever that means. But you want to make sure that you are generally paying attention to the things that your opponents do, especially the abnormal things that are not within their routine behavior or things that are clearly out of good, strong GTO play. And then you need to take notes on those and adjust. And if you do that, you're going to do very, very well at exploiting the things your opponents do incorrectly. To wrap up this video, I figured I'd give you some general poker life advice. Understand that in poker, there is a whole lot of things that you can mess up. And the number one tip I'd give to everyone is to get rid of your life leaks with a bunch of exclamation points. You can have all sorts of life leaks. You can have bad relationships. You can have substance abuse. You can have gambling abuse. You can be a workaholic. You can be, you can do all sorts of stuff wrong, right? You probably know, you probably know the things that you do wrong in life right now today. And I would recommend you go well out of your way to fix those life leaks. Some life leaks that poker players specifically have a lot of is that they like to gamble on other stuff. I would highly recommend that you stay away from other gambling games, especially when you are playing poker. I used the example earlier of a player playing $1, $2, no limit, but betting $1,000 on the sporting event on the TV over there. First things first, their $1,000 sport bet's going to be roughly break even if they're good, right? So not making any money on that. And all of their focus went from the poker table here to the sporting event over here. So now they're not going to be paying attention to poker, meaning they're going to lose a lot of edge there. And they're going to have giant swings, especially compared to their bankroll, that's supposedly good enough to play one, two, no limit by betting $1,000 on a sporting event. That is detrimental. That player is not going to make it. 
okay? You need to be focused at the poker table and betting on other stuff while you're playing poker is a sure way to not pay attention. Obviously, you don't wanna play negative EV casino games where you're just gonna lose a bunch of money. That's obviously bad too. Some people treat poker like a gambling game. Maybe you're actually pretty good at, let's say one to no limit, but if you lose, you get mad and you go on tilt, which we already determined is silly. But instead of playing your normal game, you decide to move up to 2-5 whenever you get stacked three times at 1-2. And then if you get stacked at 2-5 a few times, you get really mad and move up to 5-10. And next thing you know, you're broke. Don't do that. Make sure you keep good bankroll management. You have to practice good bankroll management. I have a bankroll Bible at pokercoaching.com slash bankroll. Check that out, please. Next, get off of detrimental substances. Is that how you spell that word? Get off of stuff that messes up your brain especially when you're going to go play poker. Uh, look, I'm all, all, all for partaking and having a little party, but, but when it comes time to focus and play poker, you really want to make sure you have a clear mind. So this means not going out and partying all day before a big poker tournament or a cash game session. It means even before you go to play a tournament series, maybe you make a point to have a reasonably clear mind. With things like caffeine, actually, which, you know, it's probably not really what you're thinking about in terms of detrimental substances. Uh, I make a point to get off caffeine like a week before I go to play a poker tournament so that if I do need it when I'm playing a poker tournament, it actually works. Because if you're on a lot of caffeine at home all the time and you kind of need it when you're playing poker, but it doesn't do anything because you're addicted, uh, it's not going to work, right? So I would generally recommend you get your brain and mind as clean as you possibly can when it is time to do anything that requires a decent amount of thought and focus and recall, like poker does. I'd also recommend you get in good physical shape. I don't think you need to be super duper buff, but you also don't wanna be very much out of shape. I, I would recommend against being super duper buff, which I know a lot of people don't have trouble with, but I see a lot of the poker players who are super duper buff and they are hungry all the time. And they're eating a lot of food all the time because they have giant muscles they have to maintain, right? So I would recommend just being in reasonably good shape. It's not even that hard to do. If you just start eating kind of healthily, you know, get off of fatty carbs, get off sugar, and then you get in the gym sometimes and, you know, you, you go in there, you work out decently hard, you make a nice sweat going, you're going to be in at least okay shape. And that's going to help you in life. Next, I'd recommend you get good sleep. I highly recommend you get good sleep. I value sleep over basically anything else I do when I go to play a poker tournament. And sometimes if I'm not on a great sleep schedule, if the tournament starts at noon, I'm going to wake up as late as I possibly can. Like say I did have to stay up late the day before for whatever reason. I'm not waking up at 10 a.m. like I may want to. I'm going to sleep until 11, 1145, roll out of bed and, uh, you know, do, uh, take a freezing cold shower, get my mind going and go to play poker. I know that's probably not ideal, but I value sleep over basically everything because I know that whenever I get tired, I completely lose focus. And look, I've done my best to work on being able to focus as well as I possibly can, but I know my focus goes out the window when I'm tired. So I highly value sleep. And you can do a lot of stuff to make yourself get better sleep. For example, just shut the blinds. You know, make sure you don't get woken up by the sun when you're playing a tournament that starts at noon. You can try to go to bed on time. Don't go out and party all night, right? You'll find that if you're on various substances, it's not going to work out for you. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night and you're going to go to bed late. And that is very, very detrimental to your focus and therefore your poker. Next, maintain healthy relationships. Uh, there are a lot of people you can have or not have in your life. The world's a big place. I would highly recommend you find people in your life who are beneficial for you and that you are beneficial for them. If you have toxic relationships, which again, this is not relationship advice or anything, but if you have toxic relationships in your life that distract you, that cause you angst, that take away your focus, I would probably recommend you figure out a way to get out of there. It's a big world. Don't think you have to stay friends with someone just because you are currently friends with people. Next, continuously learn. You need to make sure you're always improving. If you are not continuously improving your poker skills, when your opponents are continuously improving their poker skills, you are going to get behind. And when you get behind, you inevitably get so far behind to the point that you start losing. And that is terrible. I actually made a point a while back to... Not entirely, but almost entirely, do things in life that either make me more money, make me healthier, make me smarter, or make me super duper happy. 
If it's not one of those four things, I'm trying to get it out of my life. I do think there is room to have fun time or hobbies, right? I definitely think there is. I'm not saying to be a super robot, even though maybe I'm a robot. And I think you need to focus on things that actually build you up as a human. I'll give you an example. I love playing Hearthstone Battlegrounds. It's one of my favorite games in the world. But does it make me money? No. Does it make me healthier? No. Does it make me smarter? No. Does it make me super happy? Mm, makes me a little bit happier. Maybe even a lot happier. I like the game. But does it make me super happy? Mm, not really. So I should probably cut that out of my life within reason. I do still play it 30 minutes a day whenever I have lunch when I'm at home. But that's not a lot. A lot of people spend a lot of time doing stuff like watching nonsense on TVs or going out partying or, again, like anything done in excess that takes away a lot of your focus, energy, health, money, etc. Is, is probably not ideal for you in the long run. And again, I know people are going to take this along the wrong way and they're going to say, oh, you're saying I should not go for a walk in the park. But you got to realize maybe that's something that falls in the super happy category for you right? I, I, there's nothing wrong with doing things that make you super happy, but I think a lot of people only do things that make them super happy to the detriment of them making money, being healthier, and being smarter, and then those things all fall, fall by the wayside, and next thing you know, you're someone who just sits on the couch watching TV all day. So it, it's important to make sure that you get rid of a lot of your life leaks at the end of the day. Anything done in excess can be a life leak to some extent, and you have to be smart about maintaining a good, strong, healthy, positive life. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be a good, strong, happy, rich, emotionally stable, wise person. I'm getting there. I'm doing my best to get there. We'll get there one day. That's going to be it for this video. Mastering the mental game is a lifelong process. You'll find that even if you are the most stoic poker player in the world, things don't really bother you at all. Inevitably, something's going to happen that bothers you and you realize, hmm, I still have work to do. That's going to be it for today. If you can think of any other things you would recommend players look into pertaining to mastering the mental game, write them in the comments section below. I know a lot of people like meditation or cold showers or specific forms of workout or listening to music or listening to random sounds. Like I know a lot of people recommend all sorts of things. I told you today what I think works very well for me, but I realize that's not what's going to work for everyone. So let me know in the comment section below what actually does work extremely well for you because maybe it'll help somebody else out who is unaware of those things and they can give it a try and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. That's going to be it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button down below. Click the notification bell. If you like these more longer form videos where we discuss specific topics, these mastering the fundamental series, let me know. If you don't like it, well, that's okay too. Good luck in your game. Have fun. I wish you the best of success in life. And I'll talk to you next time.